Howdy folks, Jack Devine coming back with, uh, I guess, more of a broad-based, approach-based lesson here on how to how to utilize some Mixolydian ideas. And, and some, so E-Mixolydian or D-Lydian are the concepts we're going to talk about today. Both those things are just fancy ways of saying A major, okay? So if you know the, the notes of A major, then you've got all the building blocks that you need to solo over this. Uh, so Deadheads, we're going to talk about this as it relates to bird song and in particular the kind of loose spacey jam this all right any head that, out there will know what that is that's the you know the main little bit of bird song and what's nice about this is that we've got we've got a wide open platform for doing e mixolydian over that chord okay that's anything from And then over that secondary chord here, right? This is this is this is the thing that kind of unlocks everything. This is an F sharp. We're playing like a third, and we're doing the inversion of the D chord with the third in the bass. But we're actually going an octave below that, and putting the E down there. That creates that wonderfully ambiguous secondary chord where we kind of pause for a second before we can dive back into the more dominant E7. We develop an idea and then we get this nice little built-in breath with that kind of ambiguous chord. So let me show you a few ideas of um, what I try to foist upon my students. There's this nice little fingering here. It starts on the, with the middle finger at the 12th fret, and we're gonna form a very basic tonality here. Right, we're just making a one, three, five arpeggio of the E chord. And then we're gonna skip over the A string with our index, with our middle finger, and come make the same shape starting on the D string. Now, this right here, is the same notes as this. So if this was an E triad, this is a D triad, and this is a D triad up an octave. So whatever's good here is the same here, is the same here. So we're gonna bring out the fact that we're playing over basically an E chord, and then a D chord with an E in the bass. We'd be silly not to be utilizing this sound. And the thing that's nice about this is it pounds that A note right into our ear. And that begs for us to resolve it into the third of our E chord again. All right, so that's what we're gonna do within this little line. We're gonna go one, two, three. These are two sets of triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm doing that with using economy strokes. This is a little trick I picked up along the way where you go down, down, up. Down, down, up. And now we're gonna sweep through these last three. We're gonna form this little E7 arpeggio shape. Okay, that's gonna be on the 13th fret G string, 12th fret B, and 10th fret high E. And that leaves us with this kind of shape here. And the pinky is conspicuously hovering right over our F sharp note. And I'm gonna hit that on an upstroke. Gonna lend us to making these kind of sounds. One, two, three, four.
of fun for the bird song enthusiasts out there. This is a very nice little fingering. It's not necessarily something I'm lifting directly from Jerry, but it's informed by his, uh, his approach over that tune. So remember, we're doing a little a, uh, E chord shape, a little D chord shape. If you're sneaky, you can actually work in this A chord shape too. It can sound a little too sequential though at that point. All right, I'll be back with another little tidbit of, I don't know, knowledge, quote unquote, for this tune. All right, the second thing I want to talk about as far as, you know, soloing strategies over birdsong is, is pretty straight ahead. If you don't know how to, to take the major scale and kind of use these descending third sequences, you're doing yourself a real disservice. You got... treat this like it's A major. Let's start at the A. It's fine. You start any on any note of the scale, okay? We're going to start on the A. And we're going to go, we're going to skip the next note, okay? Go to the, so instead of going, we're going to go, okay? We're going to invert that, so just play it straight it's gonna sound kind of you know like a drill but as you start to incorporate little fragments of that it can be really nice okay so you can do it up that concept of utilizing this and taking it down in thirds. That could, like I said, that could happen anywhere. Take this fingering. All right, so that's that. One more little bit of, I don't know, approach guidance coming up in a second here. So let's talk about probably the most obvious approach over bird song, and that would be to play the melody. This is the kind of thing that, you know, Garcia scholars talk about all the time. Start with his melodies. They were excellent. Okay, so you've got um, the main jam. And let's just try playing the melody, but rather than playing it as a single note, let's, let's try harmonizing. a wonderful springboard for you know you're you're bringing the listener in you're using information that's already been used in the in the structure of the tune to kind of s draw the listener closer <laughs> kind of a springboard and then during that that ambiguous 
right? And you can. And then again. You can mess with the duration of the. Pardon me, somebody's texting. You can mess with the duration of these. Um, those lines, you don't have to play it dead on every time. You can vary it a little bit, you know? You can play with it. You know, it doesn't have to be a note for note quote, okay? You just allude to it. And then you have a baked in little pocket of, of explore okay and this is a nice little soloing strategy because everybody in the band will also know what to do everybody knows where they are and it's really pretty okay so let me teach it to you it's nice we're gonna start here on the G and the B flat note we're gonna come up one fret in this little shape there's only um, two or three shapes involved with this line so it's kind of nice you come here this is more like an approach note. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So we're gonna go slide. Then we're gonna come up here and form an A and C sharp. You best to use the ring finger is gonna just stay on the D string the whole time. And then to make the new shape, you just put down the middle finger. Okay, at least on the D and B, uh, D and G strings. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna come to the seventh fret. And then we're gonna go back to our first shape here at the ninth and seventh fret. Again, up to the eleventh fret, the second shape at the D and F sharp notes. It's like a little fragment of an E of a. Eleventh and ninth fret, and now we can switch to here, or we can stay on the B and on the uh, G and D strings, right? Uh, right that'll bring us all the way to the tippy top of the neck. I, I don't tend to play it like that because I feel like I'm running out of real estate. So. Um, this is nice. Bar here. Okay. Now we do the same shape, just on a different string set. That's the G and B string at the 11th and 10th fret, forming again part of a D chord, which is really just suspending. Right? Back to the bar up two frets and the index finger comes down on the D note at the 10th fret. Okay, or you could take this shape. Those are the same notes. You might just be more accustomed to playing that from playing blues all these years. All right, so those are the same notes though. apply that is okay again we go
wonderful. So this is more of a philosophical thing rather than a note for note, uh, you know, dissection of a solo that I crafted. This is just more conceptually explaining how I approach a tune like this. It's a very open-ended song, so it doesn't really make a tremendous amount of sense for me to try to explain, a, like transcribe an actual solo, but more to give you the tools that you could employ to, to craft your own, you know, approach. So what I give you, that's, that's, that's where my responsibility ends. At that point, I hope you take these ideas, these concepts, and apply them to the sound that you have in your brain and obviously the sound you're trying to you know, reference. I, I hope nobody's thinking that I'm advocating for a note-for-note -note, uh, parroting of Garcia. It's more that I think he's a spectacular and gifted improviser who had a, a really cool approach and a great voice on his instrument, his singing was great too, don't get me wrong. But um, but I think he's largely overlooked by the modern guitar community because, you know, there's a lot of obsession with uh, the athleticism of guitar playing. And the one thing about Garcia was he didn't have an ax to grind. He didn't really need to prove anything to anybody. He was selfless in many, in many ways. He's also a super selfish guy and then the addict, you know, ultimately, you know, bears that out but uh my thoughts on the matter are like hey get this little melody thing under control learn this little trick about taking the major scale down um in you know thirds that's a really good thing and then this kind of uh what i call this backdoor arpeggio <laughs> Blend those three ideas together with some of the other stuff you probably have got under your, um, you know, in, in your quiver, and I guarantee you, you're going to have a better time next time you solo over a bird song. So, pardon the informal nature and semi, you know, loose structure of this lesson, but I, I'm thinking that this might actually be better than just spoon feeding you a bunch of licks. All right, take care of yourselves and tune in often, and uh, hopefully, you guys can. Uh, Take something away from this. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.